afternoon, everybody. Hola, here, and welcome back to Laura Jones and the Gates of Good and Evil. So last time, Alex Byrne is upset that someone has stolen his academic awards. Byrne figures that it must be Mike McManus, a jock who doesn't like him. The artifact was inside one of his trophies. Laura has decided to find Mike and see if he has the artifact. So yes, uh, Laura Jones was invited back to the, the university from a, by a professor who had found some sort of artifact that had special traits. Uh, he wound up in a coma because apparently he didn't pass the, um, I'm guessing he didn't pass the, the ordeal, which really wasn't that bad. It was just long and tedious. But Laura did, and she is one of the special people um, that interact that when they touch the artifacts they interact with them and and we have to play a mini game so yeah um the brainiac friend of the professor had his his stuff stolen one of the artifacts was in the trophy so we have to find the trophy 12 35 p.m carnegie dormitory mcmanus's room <laughs> are are you mike mcmanus yeah I'm Mike. Want my autograph? I'm sorry, but I need to run to practice now. Why don't you come back sometime tonight? I'm Laura Jones, and I need a number of things that belong to Alex Byrne. And what does that have to, and what does this have to do with you? There's a trophy on that table, and it has Byrne's name on it, doesn't it? Okay, you got me. I took Alex's academic awards. But only because he stole my athletic awards. So you stole all of Alex's academic prizes because he stole all of your athletic awards. Yeah, you know, an eye for an eye and eye for an eye. Wow, really? <laughs> Mike may be muscular, but he is dumb. Right, in amongst his wards was something that belongs to me. Kind of. Sort of? I've never actually had it in my hands, but it belongs to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Everything's under my bed. Feel free to take a look. Just don't take Alex's things or I'll have to go after him again. If he wants his awards back, he should return mine first. Oh, and you'll need the key to my suitcase? It's in one of the balls. I'm late, so I gotta run now. Bye. So I get to play with your balls while you're away. Fantastic. So, the key is in a ball, and Alex's awards are under the bed. Looks pretty incriminating. I'll rummage around a bit to see if I can find anything else. So collect all of the balls. Well, there's certainly plenty of them. Wow, there's a lot of balls here. Like all kinds of balls. Not just like, you know, normal sports balls, but like tennis balls and stuff too, which is actually kind of impressive because most people, most sport, most big sport heads don't think of that, uh, don't think of them as sports balls. Another hint. Hallelujah. So I have five balls remaining. Don't ask me how. I'm, I'm, apparently we're dealing with a mutant here. All right, so just one ball. One measly little ball. One lonely little ball. There it is. All right, so hey, there's something inside this ball. 
but we have to find a way to open it. So I need a key to the suitcase. I need a password for that. Oh, or, or maybe a card? Doesn't go there. Piece of paper with some numbers written on it. Well, that's nice, but what what numbers? Could you could you tell me what numbers are written on there, please? So this looks like, yeah, it would go in that slot. It's like an access card would go in there. Oh wait, there's a knife. Okay, yeah, all right, and that brings up a key that opens that, that gives us the access card. It's only two digits, so. I was gonna say, it's only two digits. Obviously, it should be fairly easy to pick open. I know this game, it's Tangram. All of the pieces must fit together in the gray space without overlapping. Right, I am familiar with this game as well. Boom. Okay, you go like that. You go like that. And you go there. Easy peasy. It's a puppy dog or a wolf. I'm not sure which. It might be, it, it could be either or really. Puppy dog, wolf. Okay, apparently that is not where that one goes. Nope. How about you? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So they do click into position and kind of tell us where they where they where these things actually go. Which makes it a lot easier than it should be, I think. Because, okay, are you... This part of the beak? Yes, you are. Okay. So you do not go there. No. But you go there, I bet. Yeah. All right. Um, like that? Yes. I am just rocking this, damn. Of course, when they put, basically kind of put stuff in the, 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 the positions already. Wait, but that doesn't make any sense. Oh, that one didn't click into position. Oh wait, what if we take you out, put you in there? There we go, okay. So now you go like that. Yeah, there we go. Mini game is now available in the main menu. Fantastic. And that's chemistry set. And my mic that I'm hitting with my mug. Another strange vision at the end of the ordeal. This time with chemistry flasks. I'll figure out what they that means later. I better tell Alex that his awards are okay. Mike Man Manis explains that he took Alex's academic awards because Alex took his athletic awards first. Laura found the second artifact in his room. 
She now wants to confront Burn to see if he knows more about the artifacts. 1.20 p.m. Whitman Dormitory, Alex Burns Room. Strange, Alex isn't here. I wonder if Mike McManus's awards really are here. I can't believe they stole each other's awards. I know, I mean, it's like, why would they do that? Look, a hidden safe. The panel is screwed on. Well, screwdriver. Hmm, it looks, uh, what? It looks like the hamster needs to run a generator in order to open the safe. Okay, so we need to get the hamster to run somehow. Ah, hamster food. Now, oh, okay, so it's one of these. Boom! Excellent! The safe is open. What do we have here? Mike McManus's athletic awards. They really took each other's stuff. What a bunch of idiots! Agreed. <clears throat> what are you doing? I'm trying to figure out why Mike's stuff is in your room. I, uh, I, I uh... No. Why didn't you tell me what the whole story, Alex? I don't think the Dean is going to be happy to hear about this. Please, um, don't, don't, don't go tell the Dean. Don't go to the Dean. I'll lose my scholarship. He might even kick me out of the university. Listen, I don't want to get involved in your petty squabbles and silly games. Mike will give you your awards back as soon as you return his. Mike gave me his word. Kind of. Not really? Right, uh, of course. You won't tell anyone, will you? I won't if you won't. And if you tell me what you know about this artifact, can you tell me where it was discovered? I was working in the library with Professor Adams. He needed my... He needed something to create... He needed something to create... He needed something, a crate from the top shelf. That still doesn't make any damn sense. Oh. I can't, I, it contained two artifacts and a strange manuscript. Can you tell me about the manuscript? It contained information on the artifacts. Here, have a look. Dear friend, you probably remember that I once spoke of an interesting Indian legend about keys that opened the gates to a powerful portal. According to this legend, several keys are required to open the gate. These keys can only be used by a chosen person who is pure in heart and strong of will. When one key is used, it will mystically lead the chosen one to the other keys. Now this legend is true. I know this legend is true because I currently have one of the keys. Interesting. And what's the stamp with the sun and the ship at the top of the page? The stamp shows that the document is from a private archive. The library contains a number of private archives and this manuscript is part of one. You won't be upset if I hang on to this for a while, will you? Of course not. Just, just don't tell the Dean. Thanks. Have a nice day. This is a very interesting letter. But part of it is missing. I bet the rest is somewhere in the library. Alex told Laura about a part of the letter that refers to the artifacts. Laura thinks that the other part of the letter is in the library. Laura takes this opportunity to meet up with her old friend Bob, the librarian. 1.30 p.m. University Library. Hello? Is anyone here? I hope Bob won't get upset if I look for the rest of this letter. So the archive stamp has a sun and a ship on it. 
Collect all the suns and ships. No problem. We're just collecting all, literally all the suns and ships. Whether they're stamps or they're like physical models, doesn't matter to us. We want them all. All right, so two more. Got an extra hint. That may come in pretty handy. Well, there's one of the ships, okay. And of course the last one, nope, there's the last one. Wow, that was actually very easy. Well, if it isn't the promiscuous, perspicuous, I don't know. I do not know what that word means. Laura Jones, what brings you here? Bob, it's so good to see you. I'm looking for a private archive that uses a sun and ship stamp. So you're also interested in this archive. Looks like everyone's interested in these ancient artifacts. I found something, the second part of the letter. I do not want to write the details of this discovery on paper, so I'll explain everything when I see you in person. I also came across some images of the other keys, which I have sketched below with my comments. According to legend, the person who has all of the keys will have access to the Great Source. And the person who controls the Great Source also controls the fate of the world. Are we talking like the last Highlander movie that just kind of blew goats? Hang on a second. Who else has been interested in these archives? Well, Professor Claudia, Claudia Gliss, she was digging through the whole archive. Hmm. Who's Claudia Gliss and why is she interested in this archive? Yeah. I couldn't figure out why a chemistry professor would need these ancient manuscripts. By the way, why are you interested in them? Fair point, Bob. Uh, professor Adams wanted me to look into them, but now that you've mentioned Professor Gliss, I think I might it might behoove me to pay her a visit. Good luck. She's not the woman social type. Professor Gliss is a real snob. Truth be told, she's rather unpleasant person. Thanks for the information. But all the same, I think I'll try and meet with her. Oh, and another thing, since I've been back at the university, I've come across these strange footprints. Well, let me have a look. Ah, yes, these are McKay footprints. It's probably Nana's, the Professor Gliss's pet monkey and best friend. She often drags her along. Very interesting. Thanks, Bob. I'll stop by again later. Sure, I'm always glad to see you. Okay, so we know, we now know what those strange footprints are. Those were monkey footprints, um, or ape footprints at least. Uh, we also kind of know a little bit, you know, obviously we're not the only ones that are hunting after this massive amount of power and stuff like that. Um, the chemistry professor is also part of it. So we do have some competition. We also found out that this, this university's top, top students are basically a bunch of idiots. We'll go and talk to the chemistry professor next time, though, because we're all out of time for today. As always, thank you guys very much for watching, and don't forget to press the subscribe button down below so that you can stay tuned for more from Olaf Productions. If you want to see some crazy Stereo. and crazy things, you should meet me and my friends. If nobody has seen this tree bloom, how does this nobleman know that the tree will give him a specific flower? Foggy Beast is but an emanation of 
his power, search his manor. There have to be secret chambers where he keeps his victims. 